If you enjoy Our Sinclair and want to support the show, please visit our page at patreon.com slash Our Sinclair. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Our Sinclair. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today we're going to be talking about Manic Minor. Oh. Aaron, what's the most manic you've ever been? Um... Well, when I used to work at the factory, we would take a bunch of mini thins. Which I don't is, know what that means. That's basically legal speed. Okay. Are and these it, like the yellow jackets they sell? They're over little the tiny speedway? white pills. Mm. And then you'd load up on these, you down a couple Mountain Dews or whatever your caffeine of choice was, and then it was ready for ten hours of working on a conveyor belt, nonstop. It was crazy, and you could look. I could. I remember because I used to run a, a cell that made these things. And I'd look over, survey my slide line where they were putting the parts in these things, and they'd be going like this, putting these parts in. And when there was no card in front of them, they'd sit there, they would sit there like this. Wow! You know, they were ready to go. They were idling like a car. Were you Were you paid by the piece? Well, it was good if you put out more. Mm. The, if you didn't put out enough, management would be cross with you. I see. So yeah. management uh, tacitly <sighs> encouraged the use of illegal. Well, they didn't. They didn't drug. Te- oh, this was legal. So, mm. but I mean, they also people were on other stuff. I'm sure. But uh, yes, yeah, they they probably were all down with the clown on the whole uh, on that whole situation. Now, the the bad part of being manic is that you you're going like this and putting stuff in the cards, and then the cards run through a solder machine, and I would look at the card. And they'd be connectors in backwards. They'd be mm. on the wrong side of the card. Someone would have a paper clip stuck in there. So the, the speed does not always translate not always, to the accuracy. No. Yeah. And unfortunately, the cell I ran was the cell that tested these cards. And so it was pretty obvious. You know, if he puts connector in backwards, then we got a problem. And it's a ton of extra work. So, But that's manic for you. Yeah. Well, I cannot beat that story. So we're going to move on to our yeah. feedback section. And by feedback, I actually mean mailbag. Okay. We got a package, Aaron. <laughs> A nice blue box. That is nice. This looks like it's the the portal uh, symbol. It looks like one of those seeing eye things. Mm-hmm. If you looked at it long yeah, enough, like you'd box. see a, a witch or a, mm-hme. a, a, Magic a dog. Eye, or, yeah, that's right. What they're called. Yeah. Um, this comes from a from a, a guy. A guy we know. Uh, yeah, I assumed it would be a guy of some sort. Yeah. Um, Paul. We call him Boss Man. Paul, Paul Harrington. Oh, Paul Harrington. We right. know him. I've heard of him. He has sent us. You know, this came in a box eerily similar to the Wrestling Crate box. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's what's in there. Hopefully it better selects the t-shirts. Uh, Aaron, this yeah. one, I can tell from the size that this one is supposed to be for you. Oh, it I, does I, have t-shirts in it. I was just joking. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is on that t-shirt? Oh. Than, what is it? Thanatok. Mm. The dragon. That's awesome. Look at that. That looks cool. I'll be wearing the crap out of that. Thank you, Paul. Thanatok. That's an awesome dragon name, too. It looks eerily similar to the dragon that Lionheart jumped on when he rode off. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, dude. And uh, Paul has... I'll be wearing that with my newly affected weight loss. Paul has purchased for me... Look at this. Oh, that's nice. Look at this. That's right. Now what we're gonna right. do is leave you running all night, <laughs> and then wait till the smoke pours out your ears, and it'll, it'll be <laughs> it'll be just it'll like be real life. <laughs> Thank you, Paul, for this awesome <laughs> Spectrum keyboard T-shirt. I will wear this and meet the blank looks that I get with glee and mirth. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they, nobody getting that. What that? If you the first person that walks up to you and says, "Hey, it's Sinclair," <laughs> sign him up. That's He's on right. the show. That's right. I'm gonna put this on right now. Break my glasses. That's good, but it's, you ever you ever do horrible things with your glasses trying to put shirts on over top of? Well, that's one of my main. Normally, moves. I don't. Do, you know, look at that. Fits like it's glove. Yeah, it does. I'm ready now. Shut down. Pipe away. Shut down. <laughs> and the, <coughs> we got this card. Um, oh. Whoa! It even matches yeah. the box. That's Paul better than Wrestle Crate. Paul says. Hope you like them, guys. The 48K was my first ever computer, and the first game I remember playing was Countabout, an educational game. My brother Mark remade the Thanatos logo so I could have one as a birthday gift a few years back. Awesome. Yeah. Cheers, Paul Bossman Harrington. I love it. Bossman. 
What a name. He runs the show, man. And it's funny, I've just been watching a recap video of some old wrestling, mm -hmm. and it's the feud between Boss Man, the big Boss Man, and Nails. You remember Nails? No. The convict that came to get Boss Man. Really? Yeah. Because Boss Man was a prison guard, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, After Paul, Paul better be on the lookout for a guy in an orange jumpsuit. Watch out, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> um, Aaron, we also got some feedback from last week's show. Last week we talked about Chase HQ. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Andy Stevenson says, The trick is to keep your turbos until you find the bad guy. I, for one, forgot I had turbos most of the time. You did? How could you forget that? I used them all the time because I would hit stuff. He says, Then on a straight, only use the turbos and smash them. So you just got to use those turbos when you're smashing. He said, Also, look at our type on the Spectrum. I have no idea how they managed it, especially as it's only 48K. Uh, it's a cracking conversion. Mm. So, thank you, Andy. I'm sure that one's going to come up, Andy. <laughs> I need all the help I can get. I gave uh, Chase HQ another go this week. It's frustrating to me that I can get to that first guy. and It drives me bananas. I, mean, I hit him like a million times. I don't know what the trick is. Well, maybe saving my turbos is the way to go. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, we had quite a few responses to our favorite third-person racer um, community question. However, I've forgotten to record any of them on my notes this week. So um, Coming soon. Yeah. So we, we may we circle back around and pick those up. But uh, there are a ton of third-person racing games on the spectrum so do not be alarmed outstanding um i wonder if there was a quality of that one i don't i don't think that's so. gonna is, be the key yeah. because that thing was smooth as silk man right um and our community question this week feel free to answer in whatever format you're listening to this to although youtube comments are most appreciated because those are easiest for me to find mm -hmm. um <laughs> was manic minor too hard or are americans just too soft I've got an opinion on that. All right. It, it, that dovetails nicely into what I'm going to talk about later. Well, let's talk about mm. this week's game, Aaron. Mm. This week's game, Manic Miner. Now, um, before we dig too far into this, <clears throat> we, uh, me and Brent, I think it was, played, uh, I don't think it was you, but we played Jet Set Willie. And I, 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 so I had played that, the sequel to this, much, much more than I'd actually played this. Now, I think I'd given this a go one time, long ago, mm -hmm. and gave up in about 10 seconds, mm -hmm. okay? So, my goal this week was to last longer than 10 seconds, and I'll get into that in a moment. So, Manic Miner, first release boat in the uh, glorious year of 1983. I was two. Were you two? <laughs> two. <laughs> well, I was older. Uh, I was just on the cusp of being potty trained. It was a glorious oh, geez, year. Oh, man. So, published by Bug Bite Software Limited in the UK, and... Apparently, this thing got republished like a million times. And now, this was developed by uh, a fellow named Matthew Smith. Now, again, we covered this uh, fellow on ARG. If you want to go back and listen to the Jet Set Willie episode, this is an interesting cat. <clears throat> so, he's not credited with a lot of games. Uh, he did a, he did a game called Andre's Night Off. He did a game that was never released called Attack of the Mutant Zombie Flesh-Eating Chicken from Mars. Oh my gosh, what a title. He did this game that we're covering today, did Jet Set Willie and Sticks. All right, That's about the band, right? I, who knows? So, and I remember reading in, in an interview from this guy, he said, listen, uh, uh, I made, he, he made, I think it was, uh, he took six weeks, I think it was, to make Manic Mind. He said it was a, del a light. And he said... When he did the sequel, Jet Set Way, it was like six months of pure hell, I believe mm. is, the way, is the way he wrote it. And so he developed quite a reputation from these games. Clearly two of the finer and more popular games on the, on the system. And so he ended up getting signing up, but it was, going to be a, it was supposed to be a big deal. And really a lot of his projects just sort of tailed off. They never got finished or they took too long. And so this guy became like a, a recluse, basically. And he went to like, I believe it was Holland. And he joined a, uh, a, a, a he joined like a, a, a monastery or a, or something weird like a hippie. Like a it was a commune. Yeah. That's what it was. And he was gone for like years. And I think he was in Holland until like he couldn't stay any longer. And he went back to the UK. And he was stunned that people knew who he was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they were like, "It's that guy," <laughs> you know. And so he sort of had a, a second life. And he went in. He went on. You know. And he's actually working now. Uh, he's uh, working on a, well in 2013 he was working on a new game with Elite Systems. Uh, he worked with uh, a lot of uh, mobile game places. He did documentary appearances and stuff. So he 
after that that time in the commune, he came back and was you know, he was back in the spotlight, which is kind of neat. It's kind of a happy story, right? Uh, for the guy, uh, I've having played this and Jet Set Willy, uh, they're similar games. Uh, I think I think Jet Set Willy is amusing. It, they're very similar, but I probably would say I prefer this one. That's just me. But I'll explain why later. This thing was uh, original to the Spectrum, and it got ported to everything on Earth. And I'll go through some of the list here. <clears throat> the Amiga, the Amstrad, CPC, the Beeb, uh, the, the Commodore 16. Right, right. The C64, the Dragon, which means I could have played this on the Coco. Oh, yeah. In fact, there's a secret screen I read about on that one. Mm. The Game Boy Advance. How about that? Um, the MSX, the Auric 1. The Sam Coupe, which I got more to say about that. Love the Sam, as you know. The Tatung Einstein. I never heard of that. We need to investigate what that is. <laughs> the MTX, the PMD85, and the Xbox 360. It's, towards the end, they just start making stuff up. Oh, yeah, the old PMD. <laughs> Man, <you know? laughs> I have memories of the PMD85. Um, so this was 48K, one player. You know, uh, The original price on this uh, lovely was... Uh, Right around six pounds, mm-hmm. and uh, it sold well. Yeah, <laughs> let's just put it that way. So, but we'll get into that later. So, let's talk about Manic Mind. Now, Smith himself says he was sort of inspired by the Atari Eight Bit game Miner Twenty Forty Nine. Now, we both love that game. Yes, we play it many times. We've mentioned it a zillion times. Um. I will tell you that this bears, I mean, gameplay-wise, it's, I guess there are some similarities, but this is, this is like if you were making up a minor 24-niner and your entire goal was to make every life a living hell for every player. Mm. <laughs> the first screen of this, which is called the Central Cavern. Now, I, I will say, I only played this on the Spectrum. I didn't look at the other versions. I did, so I can oh, talk good. a little bit about that good. later. Oh, good. You didn't look at the Sam Coupe version. I did. Did, did you? Yes. That's outstanding. Good, good. Good for you, Boat. So, um, let's talk about this. It starts out in the Central Cavern, okay? And I played this... When we picked this, uh, or when this got chosen, uh, I, I started. I loaded it up Sunday night, and we recorded last on well, Friday, so a couple days. And here I go, and I'm playing this game, and I rage quit at least four times the first two days I played it, and it was all trying to get past the first screen. It's the most infuriating screen of all time. Mm. <clears throat> it is made. I got to give this guy Smith credit. He comes across the nice guys in a commune. He is a man with, of, with diabolical design genius. Mm-hmm. Um, and I played the first level. I didn't have any save states. I'm using that crappy emulator. So I had to gut through, just like a proper a player. <clears throat> and uh, I guess we should elaborate. In this game, it's fairly simple. You are Willie the Miner. You're going through these various uh, stages to collect keys to leave the stage. Simple. Right. Once you collect all the keys, you navigate back down to a gate or doorway, and then you leave. All right? It's that, And then you go to the next room. It's mm-hmm. that simple. Sounds simple. Uh, now, uh, along the way, you will encounter a variety of uh, enemies. Uh, you will encounter... Uh, I saw seals. I saw what looked like polar bears. I saw some faces. I saw toilets. I saw, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, all sorts of bizarre, wacky stuff. Um, and as you go through here, you'll also encounter um, traps, uh, fall away floors, uh, spikes, <clears throat> a weird, I don't know, prickly, prickly plants. I think they yeah, were. I, I'm not sure if they were if they were supposed to be spikes, and they, <clears throat> you know, the spectrum just you know they could use green, or if they were supposed to be. Uh, I don't think it's spelled out in the documentation, but yeah. it'll kill you. Yeah, it reminded me of the little puff, little plumpy things that'll kill you, Bruce Lee almost. Right. They looked like little weeds. Yeah. So, in the first screen of this, they, I mean, I, and I just read someone in the chat that said they had no problem with the first screen. You're a better man than me. Because I I knew right away, just by looking at the way this thing was structured, oh boy, here we go. And I'm not going to go into depth-by-depth, screen-by-screen review, but I probably could now, and I'll get into that in a minute. So, 
on the first screen, you start off, you're going across, and you've got to go to the top. You've got to collect keys from the bottom of the screen all the way to the top, and you got to get up there by jumping over stuff and timing. Right. All right. And so the first thing you do, you've got to figure out how to get past a, a, a bad guy that's walking back and forth. He's, you know, we got to get past him. And then you've got to figure out the timing on it. Then you've got to figure out how to get to the top of the screen. Then you've got to figure out how to successfully get two keys mm-hmm. with a spike in between them on the ceiling right. And the floor falling out. Mm-hmm. Then you've got to jump over two weeds. And then you're done. You get that last key and the next level starts immediately. Oh, wait a minute. The, no, it doesn't. When I got that last key <laughs> and you didn't end the level, because I didn't realize you were having to go back to the, I was stunned. Yeah, me too. And then too. I instantly died mm-hmm. because I was too I was too shaken right. to continue. That's right. Now, you know, everyone that has ever watched any show that I've been on knows that I've got a memory that's horrible. It depends. And, you well, remember very selective things. Well, I know this first screen. I could write a full picture of this. Mm-hmm. Okay, I played this screen four million times. Mm-hmm. Okay, I quit over and over. I would come back, and the time that I finally figured out, and the, what the hardest part of the screen. Let me ask you, was that key that was hanging beside the spike? Right, you because to, you've got to you got to catch it on your way down. That's right. Mm-hmm. They say some games are pick, pixel perfect jumps. This game is so that's the poster boy for right, that. Right. Right. So I got you get off the first screen. I've never felt such accomplishment. I'm seriously, it was one of the biggest accomplishments to get off that first screen. And it hit me. And that's when it hit me. And what hit me was this is one of those games that I haven't played for so long. Because there were games like this back in the day. Mm-hmm. And you became a master of them because you had no choice. All right? Now, before I continue, your thoughts, your initial thoughts, because had you played this before? So, I, I'd kind of fooled around with this and uh, Jet Set Willy on the Atari. I haven't played the Spectrum version of Jet mm-hmm. Set Willy yet. Um, so, I knew what to expect. Uh, I am not great even at the easy type <laughs> games, like in this, like I'm not great at Minor 2049er. Mm-hmm. So, in this, this, like you said, is like the ultimate, most difficult version you can imagine of that. Um, I was not shy about using ye old save state, which uh, which I did not have the uh, access to. Yeah, um, as soon as I would figure out, okay, this is what I know I have to do now. It's just about doing it. I do it, bam, F three. Now, unfortunately, sometimes I'd get the the hot keys for save state and load state confused, <laughs> and I bam, and I overwrite. Dang it! Um, so, but um, even still. I could not get off the second level of this game. Well, I couldn't figure it out. I kicked your tail. I'll tell you that. I ended up once I got past the first level. I I, I stayed up late mm-hmm. playing this game because <laughs> this game is addictive as all hell. It, I mean, and to hear me say that after that first three or four times of wanting to die, I played the hell out of this game this week. I got past the second and third screens relatively simply. The freezer, I believe, was mm-hmm. the second one. I ended up getting to the sixth screen. And the only reason I had to quit that is because I had to come to work. <laughs> I played it last night some more. Uh, so I figured the sixth screen, and I, I was incapacitated for a good chunk of the week. But I have a feeling that I could have gotten much further uh, had I had more play time. But I didn't get as much as I'd hoped because my neck was so jacked up, and I couldn't stare at a screen for mm-hmm. a long period of time. One of the screens in this... They're all, they're all so clever. You know, this is one of those games I heard about for years. I love when this happens, but I've heard about this game for years, and I'm like, uh, it's, it's. I don't think it's for me. Maybe it's something. Maybe it's a culture thing. It's all crap. Some guy in the chat room earlier said that Americans can't get this game. You're right. You're absolutely right. This is not a game for Americans. Normal Americans, they would not play this game. It's weird. It's goofy. It's got music that makes you want to stick a pitchfork in your own ear. Okay? Let's talk about the opening song. <laughs> right. I'm telling you, Smith was not screwing around. He put that in there because when the game ends, that's the first thing you hear, the off-tone garbage yeah. notes. Do you know song. what that is? Is that's, that Blue Dan? Is that yeah, the Blue, the Blue Danube, Danube by, yeah. by Strauss. He put that in there for madness. Mm-hmm. Also, I want to meet the man. I want to shake the hand <laughs> of the man that can finish this game without turning off that music. <laughs> 
Now, right. the, the, the music is quite an accomplishment in itself, uh, yeah. being on the 48K. I was reading a little bit about how each individual note was programmed somehow as an interrupt to play in between the action in a very split second level. I believe I read it. This is the first game on the ZX that, that had mu- in-game music. Mm-hmm. It's I impressive. It, yeah. But the music is maddening. Yes. Well, you, you, you quickly tire of it. It, it, didn't, it could be great music. It didn't matter. Uh I know, but you can't stop that opening screen. And yeah. <laughs> when you die in this game, for those of you that haven't played it, you get the old Monty Python special where the miner gets smushed by a big shoe, mm-hmm. right? And then that god awful off key music yep. starts out. And it, it literally, this game will make you go insane. Yeah. It isn't it. I would get so mad. I must have heard the first note of that about three million times mm-hmm. upon my death. Uh, but. Uh, once you get into a groove and you understand the true evil that this game is, that's when you are in the zone. And also, you get used to dying. It's almost like playing Dragon's Lair. Okay, I got killed here. Let's go all the way back. And of course, since I didn't have save states, I was just like anyone that would have ever played this game. That means you go back through the first four levels, mm-hmm. the first five levels. And... I mean, it, uh, you get there, and then <coughs> you know when you get back to that stage that you died on, you're going to die again. And you're going to go through all those levels again, and you're coming back to the same level, and you're going to die a third time. Mm-hmm. You might die a hundred times. So that means you're going to play every level. And this is one of those games where just because you're good at a level or can beat a level, you can still die because it's so difficult. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You can still die on the first level. Oh, shoot, I, I accidentally pre-jumped and I hit the bush. It probably happened to you a hundred oh, times. Yeah. You know, I I disagree with the with your cultural assessment of this game. I don't think that Americans would necessarily be predisposed not to want to play this because it was too hard. I think that um, they'd be predisposed not to want to play it because at the time that this would have made an impact in the United States. You know, we didn't... Uh, I'm not sure that... Like, for example, this game came out in America on the micros... But the, the size of the micro user base was so small that it didn't make an impact. You know? Well, I'm not saying it's because it's just too hard. I think it's too goofy. Uh, Smith has his own um, interesting, wacky... I mean, his it's a wacky game. Right? It's it, The whole thing's wacky. I don't know if you noticed this, but you've got... when you're, <laughs> Your extra men are j- dancing at the bottom of the screen. And just I just and so I thought that was cute. I'd read that somewhere. Well, if you if you he when if you hit mute, they stop dancing, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. I think that's funny. Yeah, it's goofy. The whole slant is goofy. Jet Set Willie's even goofier. You know, I don't. You, you know what game I compare this to the most is Donkey Kong. You know, because you're you're calculating the arc of your jump in in the same sort of a way that you are in that game. It is, but You're this... You're memorizing one, patterns. Really, if you want if you want to... Uh, that's a good comparison, but I would even go a step further and say Donkey Kong 2. Okay. Which is the unofficial fan-made ROM. Mm-hmm. It's incredibly difficult, mm-hmm. right? But this is harder. Uh, and this is uh, st- much stranger. Uh, but I, I loved... I, I have to say, I have never turned... I was going to kill this game. I knew Sunday. I was like, I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to kill this game. Uh, these people are all nuts. And thank God that I played it long enough for the switch to to flip, mm-hmm. and then I got it. I got it. I mean, listen, the controls are solid. Mm-hmm. I don't. I didn't. And one thing I can say about the game was when I started playing it, I never felt like I was getting ripped off. Like when I died, it was my fault. Right. That's infuriating. But it's but it's fair. Yeah. Um. And when you succeed, I mean, it's been a long time since I did well at a game and felt this pleased. That I did that well. That happens to me quite frequently on this show. <laughs> for example, when I passed that one event in Hypersports, the long horse for the first time, right? I, I jumped for joy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a level in this I want to mention. Like I said, I, I got to sixth, and I didn't want to watch videos of the higher levels because I didn't want to ruin them. Because this is definitely what I'm going to keep playing. <coughs> but there's a level where you go all the way around the board picking up keys. <clears throat> and... At the bottom of the screen, I think this might be the fifth level. At the bottom of the screen, there's a, two little chambers with keys in it, and then there's there's the the door, the place you're going to leave is like a pit, mm-hmm. right? And then there's one more key you've got to get. And going up and then down the middle of the screen was this face, 
And so I would come all the way around, get the two keys, and, and get over and get the last key. Well, and I noticed whenever you get that last key, the face made a beeline for the door and stood there. Did you see this level? <laughs> no. And so you couldn't leave. You got all the keys, but you couldn't leave. This big stupid grinning face was sitting there, and you wouldn't let you go. Mm -hmm. And if we tried to jump in, you're dead. Well, dummy, I was stunned. What do I do? Well, it was it was obvious once I thought about it. There's a key right beside the door. You Just don't get, get that one last. don't get that one. Mm -hmm. But there's the, this is the madness, the genius of this guy. He sets this stuff up, knowing what you will do. It's I mean. In terms of level design, and I didn't get this feeling in Jet Set Willie, and I'm, I, I'm, I have to go back and give that game another shot because I, I, I thought, man, this is too hard. I didn't get it. But the design in this is absolute. It may be the best level design I've ever seen. I, and I'm not saying that. I, listen, I will never blow smoke about this about these machines. I try to be as straight as I can. So if I get excited about something, I'm legitimately excited. I'm this might be the best level design I've ever seen in a game. I, I mean, it is outstanding. Mm -hmm. um, and, I mean, if you want pure evil. Right. Is it the best level design to encourage people to keep playing? No. <laughs> I no. will say that the, col the colorful um, characters and just the, the sheer amount of different colors on the screen at one time was one thing that kept me playing. If I was playing the, um, the uh, dragon version of this game, which was in black and white... Or the the Commodore 16 version, which I think was only like three colors. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just the, the the sheer colorfulness of, of of the boards was really really pleasing. Now I read about some of these other versions without looking at them. I, uh, I did read that the C16 wasn't very good, and I also read about the Dragon. Well, you said you actually took a look at some of these. Which ones did you yeah, have? Yeah, so look my at? my two favorites, aside from the Spectrum, the Spectrum is the best. Um, is it really the best? Well, it's it's the most iconic. Okay, it looks it looks the most okay. like it should. The Auric is very good. The Auric? Yeah, the Auric, which I think is a French computer. How did, now, did you play that or just no, look at no, it? No, I, I just looked at one of those port okay. comparison videos on YouTube. So I was very pleased with the way that the Auric version looked. What is it? What's different about that? It one? looked the most similar to the Spectrum in terms of the amount of colors. Okay. Um, the like the C sixty four had a lot of colors, but they were a lot more washed out. You know, they don't have that neon look that the, the Spectrum has. Um, and. You're gonna love this, mm -hmm. the Sam Coupe. Now, see, I had read that it had the, it possibly had the best version, and it also has the most levels. I'd it's read. also got the best music because instead of getting that, it's, it's got the backbeat. It sounds like freaking War is playing the, uh, the, the Hall of the Mountain King. So that's awesome. Yeah, it's that's very awesome. Cool. Um, any, any final thoughts on this? Uh, any that you said you got only the second level, so did you? But you saw much more. Yeah, of it. yeah, yeah. So you know, after I got, I got to a point where I, 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 I knew I would just be frustrated, and I did kind of feel guilty using the save states. Um, I just watched a playthrough on YouTube, and I enjoyed watching the playthrough. It's like you said, the level design is ingenious. When you see the how the levels are traversed yeah it it makes total sense it's totally logical it's just finding those patterns having the patience to find those patterns and going back over and over again to the beginning and starting over again so it's um like i said this is this is one of the all-time classics for the specky and and rightfully so in my now opinion. i believe the this has 20 stages as i recall um which is just it took me so long to get to six. I'm not gonna get to twenty. Um, I, I this is a game. You know, this game opened my eyes to some stuff, and not just because of the game, but just the. Uh, and you mentioned it. You were using save states or whatever. This is one of those games that modernizing it can ruin it. Yeah, that's very true. It could save it too, depending on your ability to not want to die and your time commitment. You know, right? But you it. You really, to get good at this game, you have to die a thousand right. times. Right, you're exactly right. And I think that was one of the reasons why I couldn't get past level two is because I hadn't put in the time getting good at level one yet. And something, I, I, as I flipped through, I flipped through a, uh, like I said, I didn't want to go level by level and look at these because I want to play all through the levels. But that he, something else that Smith does is he mixes up the challenges a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, you've, some boards have conveyor belts. Some boards have these, like, moving like hurdles and some you know some boards have uh characters that walk around and some things that will float sometimes there's spikes and there's the he uses disintegrating 
floor is better than any game I've ever seen. Oh yeah, yeah. The the sheer except for maybe like a Mario. The level. sheer variety of challenge. You know, we were talking about the Amiga game Power Glove the other day, which is another sort of platforming jump game. Yeah. Um and. I mean, this is this is a game that was written in you know one one hundredth of that amount of code, and the sheer amount of challenge, variety of challenges, is so awesome. Colorful, good looking. I mean, again, given the, given this, given the situation, I did, I did want to talk a little bit about some of the more modern versions of the game. Yeah, go ahead, man. Um, the where this game falls apart, any version that involves a scrolling screen. Where you can't see the whole screen. They make those? Yeah. Who, it, what it are those time. on? The DS is like that. And even some of the 16-bit computer versions are like that, too. Uh, that's no good. If you can't see the whole level, it, it takes it, it, the, the game becomes something different at, the, at that point. Because part of the fun is seeing where all the keys are right off the bat. It's like it's a hyper-load runner situation. Yeah. You know, when we talked about that. Like, there's one level where you start out, like... It seems like you could just leave. I mean, you're ready to go. It's like, and it, the, but they, it's deceptive. You're going to be taking a tour. There's no easy. There is no cheap win in this game. I thought the second level was the easiest I played, and it wasn't easy either. It's just by that time I had caught on to some of the of some of his evil. Um, uh, I don't think I'd want to play this on anything else. Uh, I, uh, I think I'll. I mean. Yeah, I'm sure they could make a better version. I don't know. The Sam Coop having a bunch of additional levels would be cool. Might be worth checking out. You know, if they're if if he did them, mm -hmm. that's something else. I don't think I want anyone else doing this yeah. because this is a special level of genius mixed with evil. And I will say something else. You can see why this was such a big seller, okay? Because you know, every kid doesn't have every game on earth like we do now. You'd buy this up at the store, <coughs> and then you would. You could invest a lot of time in this, and you could play it and never, and never uh, master it, and still have challenge getting off the first or second levels because you could die at any point. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at these levels here as it goes. So these are levels that I'm familiar with, uh, the, the chicken level here, uh, and, and uh, again, this one you have to master the that falling floor, and you have to make a pixel perfect jump to get off the one platform at the top. That's what I liked about the game. So he, it's not an accident that it's written that way, and that's what makes it astounding. I can see where this guy's been uh, heralded as a genius. I mean, it, it's very impressive. And I don't want to sit here and gush on it, but I've, I, was, I had more fun and less fun with this game than I've ever had any game in my life. Let's uh, let's check in with our Discord community, okay, and see uh, what they're how they reviewed this game. Uh, Pixels of Dawn says. A challenging platform game, or mm -hmm. a puzzle, really, with limited replayability that benefits from a tighter focus than its sprawling successor. Made infinitely better when you discover the music off key. <laughs> however, oh, even if in-game music... Uh, however, even if in-game music... I think... Okay. Even in-game... I think what he meant to say was even in-game music was an achievement back then. Mm -hmm. Very true. Very yeah. true. And I think the H key... Is the music off yeah. key? Oh, it is. I can guarantee you. Yeah. Uh, Discord people, proofread your reviews. I turn into the freaking Anchorman guy. I only read what's on the page. <laughs> Chris Fold says fun visuals and controls let down by a near vertical difficulty level. I had this in the day and can never even get past level one. Now I can get to level three or four if I'm lucky, but it's just crazy hard. My why make twenty levels if mere mortals can never see more than four? I want to love it. But I can't. Stick with it. Five out of ten no. from Chris. No, sorry, Folds. Graham Vebke says, I totally understand all the nostalgia and that it's responsible for putting ZX Spectrums in many homes, but this is a very frustrating platform game. I can't get past level four and would rather invest my time into Chucky Egg than this game or Jet Set Willy, for that matter. Five out of ten. Chucky Egg's good. I, no, we both love that. Mm -hmm. I like this one more. I'm telling you guys... You have to play it till it hurts, and then it's then you will understand. You know, <laughs> pain is manic minor leaving the body. That's right. Uh, D man, this is his first review. All since right, joining us, becoming a Patreon supporter. He says, "Manic minor is easy to pick up and extremely difficult to master, with pixel perfect positioning and timing required to nail some of the jumps." Combining the gameplay with the quirky humor and the iconic in-game music cements Manic Miner's position in the pantheon of classic Spectrum games. 9.5 out of 10. He's not wrong. I mean, this... 
Gosh, I can't believe it. I, I think I like this more than Bruce Lee. Wow. That's high praise indeed. Well, you know me. Yeah. This and, and, I, this game is hard to judge because it is the it is brutal. But I mean, it, that's part that's the game. Right. Right. You know, and you and people know got to know that going in. I mean, this game's got a rep. And like I said, when we I got to go back and play Jet Set Willie because that was my I, I was like those other guys. This is too hard. This is frustrating. People are looking at this as roasted glasses. I have a feeling that I didn't the switch didn't click that time. Mm-hmm. You know, but yeah, I can understand what the, what people would say. And we've there. got one more. Matthew Perron. All right. Chimes in from Montreal and says, "Great puzzle platformer game that is a great challenge." And puts your sense of timing to great use. Mm -hmm. The looping music is the worst aspect of this game. (laughs) That's true. I feel right at home since I played a lot of Blagger on the C64, which is essentially the same game. Mm -hmm. 7 out of 10. Have you heard of Blagger? I'm not. I'm I'm not. Again, my C64 knowledge is relatively limited. Yeah. Um, And How about the uh, magazines of the day, Aaron? How did they review? Well, it was very... Let me just go over some of these awards, Bo. (coughs) So get this. All right. This won the C and VG 1983 Golden Joystick Award, mm-hmm. uh, third place, excuse me, for Game of the Year. It was the winner of the best arcade style game that year. Um, the magazines that I saw, I don't know, if, you know, I, I had trouble finding reviews for some magazines because the, the way they were listed. Mm. So I don't think I've got any magazine reviews. I know that sounds insane, but I, I looked, I couldn't mm-hmm. find anything really. Uh, so I, I'm going to go ahead and give you a pass on that. Okay. Uh, I will say I looked this up on eBay. Of all the carts we've actually looked over, this was actually uh, demanding. Oh, I did get a review from uh, uh, the uh, ZX, uh, you know, the World of Spectrum. That's right. Mm-hmm. 8.28. Yep. yep. I'd say it's right on par. Right. Uh, in terms of eBay, uh, 10 to 20 bucks UK. Then having, of course, we don't get this here, so you're going to be ordering this from the UK if you want a tape of it, but. Um, to say I'm flabbergasted, if I if you'd asked me Sunday, it wouldn't have been the same review. It took a while. So yeah, whoever uh, the the committee did a good job. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> did a I, tremendous job. I would like to thank the committee. It sounds like an Oscar speech, right? Isn't that yeah. what they? Oh no, they say the Academy, don't they? Same, well, same thing. Yeah. Um, I would like to thank them all. Um, Hasifa, Christopher Hassel, um, Graham Vebke, Paul Harrington. Um, uh, Chris Folds uh, and Pixels at Dawn for um, for choosing uh, the uh, the games that we play every week. Uh, they're Clive's Club members on Patreon. Uh, you guys have made this show tons and tons of fun for us because you're picking all the best stuff. Um, and I know that there's tons more good stuff to be picked. So uh, thank you guys. And I'd also like to thank uh, all of our just Patreon supporters. Um, all of our uh, Graham Vebke. Roto NL, Tapes from the Crypt, Pixels of Dawn, Chris Folds, Paul, Bossman, Harrington, and Christopher Hassel. Uh, thanks, you guys. Uh, thanks for your support. Next week, Aaron, we're going to be doing a shooter. Our first shooter on this on this show. Okay. okay. All right, shooter. Okay. Now, I want to tell you the name of this game. Okay. You know, I did this wrong because I want you to forget that I just told you it was a shooter. Okay. Okay. That's no problem. And I want you to tell me what genre you think this game is. Okay. The name of this game is Morty Vicar. Can you say it again without the accent? No. Um, what? What do you mean no? I have do- a hard time saying these words without without an accent. I heard. Did I hear Vicar? Mm-hmm. More, what? Morty Vicar. Like M O R T Y. No, not like Morty the Mole. I'm talking about more M O R E. Oh, more like Morty Vicar. Like Morty. Comma, Vicar. That's a game? Yes. Uh, I would say it's some sort of uh, uh, one of those uh, therapist games, you know, mm. like Eliza. What? You know. No. You know, where like, you, you type in stuff. It's like, tell me how you feel. And you tell it, and it tells you what's wrong with you. Is that a thing? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they were a big deal back in the DOS days. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, this is a shooter. <laughs> a shooter? <laughs> Derp. Who knew? Right. So uh, we'll be taking a look at that and next week. Uh, if you enjoy our random nonsense, uh, be sure and check out our other shows. <laughs> You're in luck. Amigos Everything Amiga and ARG Presents. Um, guys, until next week, keep playing the Spectrum. And Thank you. Rewind tape. And press play. Whoa.